students let us start the next topic that is variable valency so first you should know what are ionic compounds and what are ions so you know that ionic compounds are compounds which are formed by combination of different ions or which are having ionic bond so for example in nacl there is one positive charge and negative charge so positive charged ion are known as cations and negative charged ion are known as anions so na has fixed valency because it can lose only one electron so it has form na plus and cl are is also having fixed valency because it can gain only one electron but in some conditions or in some reaction conditions some elements like copper mercury and iron can have different valencies they have variable valency 1 and 2 1 and 2 2 and 3 so they can form different number of bonds according to different conditions so here let us take example of copper so copper can have one valency or two valency both means some conditions it can lose one electron to form cu plus that is known as cu plus and some conditions it can lose two electrons to form cupric so best example is cupric oxide here cuprous oxide so you will say that it is losing one electron then why it is uh, showing cu2o so here copper can form one bond so here this type of bond is formed so here two coppers are there both are forming one bond with oxygen so here plus here uh, only plus one charge is there in this copper and here also plus one charge is there so cu2o here copper or cup cupric oxide single q uh, here single cu can forming is forming two bonds with oxygen. so here single co is forming two bonds with oxygen because here q copper has lost two electrons so it can form two bonds here copper has lost one electron that's why it is forming single bond so here cuprous oxide cu2o and here cupric oxide cuo so two bonds are formed by cup, uh, cupric oxide here you can see and here cuprous oxide or uh, single bonds are formed understood so in the same way mercury is having one and two both valencies one if it is losing one first electron only one electron then it is mercurous oxide and if it is losing two electrons then it is mercuric oxide ngo in the same way iron is having two and three valency so if is uh, if iron is losing two electrons then it is known as ferrous oxide or ferrous if it is combining with oxygen then oxide or it can combine with other elements okay and if it is losing three electrons then it is ferric so these are various example okay it is not like that it is all, all, always from cuprous oxide and all it can also combine with other elements okay now i hope you have understood the concept of variable variable valency so variable valency is nothing but capacity of an element or atom to form different number of bonds with an other element let us start next topic that is radicals so in any compounds like nacl other or other any uh, compound there are two parts cation and anion so here two parts independently are known as radicals so here for example noh it is a ionic compound here na is na it is na plus and oh minus so this positive part and negative part we have seen that positive part is cation it is negative part is anion so this independently na and oh minus they are taking part independently in the reaction so that's why these are known as radicals here k plus and oh minus so koh is formed by positive radical that is k plus and negative radical that is oh minus so they both of them take part independently that's why they are known as radicals here calcium hydroxide here calcium 2 plus and oh minus here two oh are joined that's why two plus sign is there okay so like this so here this calcium is forming single bond with this while losing one electron here and here losing one electron that's why sign is two plus because it is losing two electrons or uh, to form two ionic bonds so here oh minus oh minus so that's why ca oh twice okay now third these are some bases okay these are some bases so here you can see in all the bases oh minus is common so most of the bases are containing oh minus as their radical so main thing is that positive ion positive ion is known as acidic radical and negative ion is known as basic radical 
so all the bases contains most of the bases not all the bases most of the uh, bases contain OH minus as their acidic radical now let us see some acids so here HCl is formed by H plus and Cl minus you all know H plus and Cl minus so this cation this anion both are radicals HBr is formed by H plus and Br minus and HNO3 is formed by combination of H plus radical and NO3 minus radical in this case H2SO4 there are two hydrogen ions H plus and there is SO4 ion that is 2 minus so hydrogen ion is positive ion that is cation and SO4 2 minus is anion so here you remember that number of positive signs and negative signs will be same here two hydrogens they having plus sign means two plus sign is are there here therefore two minus signs are there okay here also plus sign is one minus sign is one so here you can understand that all the positive signs are known as basic radicals and negative signs are known as acidic radicals understood so this is about the radicals so I hope you have understood the concept of radical in uh, bases common anion is OH minus and acids common cation is H plus so in most of the bases the acidic radical is OH minus and in uh, acids basic radical is H plus basic radicals actually there are two types of radical basic radicals and acidic radicals so let us see some basic radicals so basic radicals are having again some types monovalent, bivalent, trivalent and tetravalent so name itself indicates monovalent means its valency is 1 mono means 1 so it is having only plus, char plus charge single plus charge so it can form only single bond for example H plus so H plus can form single bond with the other element like HCl single bond H plus Cl minus in the same way bivalent is having two plus 2 charges it means it can form 2 bonds for example magnesium hydroxide so it will form two bonds that is MgOH twice means two OH are attached to the magnesium so it is bivalent means bi means two valent means valency trivalent means what it can form three bonds for example aluminium chloride so AlCl3 single aluminium is combining with three chlorine atoms to form AlCl3 so trivalent three valency so that's why three plus such so according to this tri or mono by the plus charge is there tri means three plus charges are there means three valency mono means single plus charge is there single valency okay so in this way uh, this is tin uh, latin name of tin is tennis so that's why name is tannic okay so here copper you can see copper plus is having single plus is having cuprous two plus is name is cupric as we have seen earlier in the same way if you can uh, consider as HG plus single HG plus it is mercurous and HG2 plus is mercuric now tetravalent means what they can form four bonds like this SNCl4 so this tin can form four bonds so stenic so while naming these red, uh, compounds you have to uh, use the basic radical first here SN4 plus means what tin so this stannic so stannic chloride here hydrogen is the basic radical so hydrogen chloride magnesium hydroxide these are some acidic radicals they are having also various types some of these types are given uh, monovalent bivalent and trivalent monovalent means having single uh, valency that is minus single minus charge here you can see the name is given like this hydrogen minus so hydride fluoride chloride bromide iodide so in the same way bivalent is having two minus sign oxide sulfide carbonate sulfate sulfide in the same way third one is trivalent means having three valency three negative charges nitride phosphate so there are many more now while naming any ionic compound we have to use the name of both acidic and basic radical for example NaCl so here this is basic radical this is acidic radical so here you have to name first basic radical then acidic radical so you know this name of this Na plus is what sodium and Cl minus is what chloride so sodium 
fluoride. I hope you have understood acidic and basic radicals and their types and their valencies. So these radicals are used for finding molecular formulae of ionic compounds. So you should know the valencies of radicals and their name. So these some of the radicals are written on the left for your reference. So let us see how to find molecular formula of ionic compounds. So this topic is our last topic. After this lesson will be over. Now molecular formulae of some compounds we have seen in the previous class and we have also seen the cross multiplication method for finding molecular formulae of some compounds. So this method is also same only this method is specific for ionic compound. So let us start. So for finding molecular formula of any compound you should know their name, symbol and their valencies. For example you want to find sodium sulphate. Okay. So, so let us take one acidic radical and one basic radical. So take let us take sodium as basic radical. So remember that always write basic radical on the left side. So first step is to write symbol of that radical. Then take one negative radical that is acidic radical sulphate. So write the symbol of sulphate on the right side. So basic radical on the left side acidic radical on the right side. Next write the valency of that radical. So you know that valency is nothing but the charge on that radical. So sodium is having plus one charge that's why sodium valency is one. Sulphate is having two minus charge that's why valency is two. So this is the second step. Third step you have to cross multiply this in the same way which we have seen in the previous standard. So now fourth step you have to write according to the multiplication Na2SO4. So here one is there so no need to write anything only simply SO4. In this way we have found the molecular formula of this compound that is sodium and sulphate. Sodium sulphate. So while naming also you have to remember that basic radical name should come first. So basic radical is sodium. Sodium first then SO4 means what? Sulphate. So sodium sulphate. So in this way we can determine the molecular formula of any ionic compound. So let us see one more example. So let us take one more example of calcium and oxygen. Let us take basic radical as calcium. So write calcium here and here oxygen which is acidic radical. So calcium valency is what? 2. As you can see Ca2 plus and oxygen valency is also 2. So write here 2. Now next step is to cross multiply simply. So you will get answer as Ca2 and O2. Now this remember whenever the atoms are in some uh, you can say whole multiples of each other you can say 2, 4 or 4, 8 etc. So you can simplify this to simplest ratio. So this can be simplified as this can be divided by the 2 to get simple formula that is CaO 2 divided by 2 1 here also 1. So whenever 1 is there we, we, we are not writing anything. CaO means 1 calcium and 1 oxygen. So while naming you can simply name calcium oxide. So calcium and oxide. Here you can say oxide. Okay. So left side name of basic radical that is calcium and right side the name of acidic radical oxide. So in this way you can find out molecular formulae of different ionic compounds. I hope you have understood this method of finding molecular formulae. This is very simple. For this you should remember all the charges of different radicals acidic basic and you, you should remember some examples of monovalent, some examples of divalent and trivalent. Now our chapter is over. Now in the next video we will discuss uh, question answers of the textbook exercises.